Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hollow Tide here, and today I want to talk about season four. I made a video recently saying that it was going to be a win for Halo for Halo Infinite, and a lot of people, you know, didn't necessarily agree with that. Um, it, we, there were some things that people, you know, brought up saying, you know, how can this be a W? The game's been out for two years, and they're just now adding infection. Look, I don't know how to say it any more clearly than I already have, and I think most of you know who watch the channel can agree with this statement but I am very critical when it comes to you know Halo, Halo Infinite and whatnot. There are a ton of things that have been missteps in the past and things that I wish Infinite would have launched with and that's just unfortunately not the reality we live in. A lot has happened since the launch of Halo Infinite. We talk about it all the time on the channel and it's not that I don't want to dwell on those you know missed opportunities and missteps it's that i am going off of what we have today i'm comparing this season to previous seasons you know i work with what i have and i don't think that it's useful to say such blatantly obvious things over and over and over and over again we all know that people wanted infection at launch we all know that career rank was super important and wished it was at launch Forge at launch, customization stuff at launch, and we've brought up those issues on this channel before. So again, we're going to talk about season four, the launch of it, my first impressions, I guess a reaction to the season as it stands right now. Maybe we'll do a season four review when, you know, we have all the events and stuff done and we'll go from there. That being said, if you love Halo and you want a YouTuber to watch and listen to who is not a shill and also not just like a big baby, I'm that person. We are grinding away to 15,000 subscribers and I think that we can hit that before this year ends and I know 96% of you do not sub to the channel who watch the videos so I would greatly appreciate it also leave a like on the video if you agree and you can even throw a dislike if you don't okay let's talk about season four and basically what we have right now as most of you know we have career rank there are forge updates new sandbox items and balancing infection came new maps and a lot of new customization options so let's talk about the career rank and the progression of it the career rank in infinite feels like mcc's progression system there's different tiers it goes from like bronze silver gold Platinum, Diamond, all the way up to Onyx, and then the last rank is called Hero. And within those different tiers, there's also different ranks, so it goes from, like, Cadet and General. Now, your rank shows up pretty much anywhere that you can see your Spartan, I guess. So, like, even the match intros, your profile, if you inspect a player, just pretty much wherever your nameplate is, that's where the career rank will be. And it also did not start tracking your progress since launch. It only starts on season four. So everybody starts at the same, you know, level. And people are racing right now to get to that hero rank first. There's some controversy revolving around that. I'm not going to get into it. Progression does not work in custom games, Forge, or the Academy. Double XP boosts do not work as well. There is some customization, but people are kind of upset that there's no reward for Hero. As of right now, Sketch did confirm that they are telling people to stay tuned. So a lot of people have done like math and stuff revolving around like how many games it would take. And it's like, if you were the top of the leaderboard every single time and you got like 2000 XP, it would take like 4,600 games or some number like that. So not the most. It's not like 152 in Halo 5, which kind of makes me wonder what the, I guess, longevity of this is going to be and Halo Infinite. I guess we'll see what happens. Like I said, Forge updates. We don't do a lot of Forge stuff, but the coolest thing that they added was water. We got some new pieces of equipment, the Quam Translocator. Um, it's really cool. I won't lie. You create like a little slip space thread at a location and then you can run around the map. There's a little timer and you just have to reactivate it and you'll get sent back to that location where you had the original point. And you can use it, I think, like nine times if you just keep spamming it on the cooldown. I think it's going to be pretty cool to watch and see how it evolves. I don't think that it's as overpowered as people thought it was going to be. A lot of people are like, this thing is going to be whack and stuff, but I think it's kind of cool. The Threat Seeker is also out there, and that is basically the Threat Sensor, but it's very different. It sends out one pulse, and the opponent has to be in the line of sight. So uh, I, I haven't really utilized it. I haven't used it a bunch, so to be determined. I guess we'll see how a lot of this equipment does 
in like the HCS events coming up because the pros are going to be the ones that take the most advantage, figure out how to use it the most effectively, and then go from there. The threat sensor also got a little update, so it pings more and it can bounce around. So that's kind of cool, I guess. All right, let's move on to infection. So for those who don't know, which I'm sure most of you do, it's a round-based mode where one team has to run around the map and slice up the survivors and will add the survivors to the infected team. The ones who start off infected are called the alphas and then the ones they kill turn into betas. Eventually, you get to the last barn standing, and they have special traits such as an overshield and infinite ammo. But they pop up on the, the map screen thing to all the other infected, so it's like just a mad dash. A bunch of the maps also have infection variants, um, where there's just noticeable changes. I think that's really cool, and there's dead Spartans, so that's kind of sad. There are two new maps right now, not counting Plaza, and that is Scar, the BTB map, which I have not played any BTB. Uh, when they launched, it had like BR rocket starts in the BTB heavies mode, and I was just like, I'm not going to try it out. So I haven't even played that map. Forest is like the arena map, and man, I love it. It is my favorite. I love, I just love how it looks. So we did get a new core as well, and that is the Hazmat core, and I thought that I would not like it, and honestly, it's like my second favorite right now i i don't know what it is about it just like the bagginess or something i love the cloth fabric instead of just all armor and like a rubber undersuit i don't know if that's a hot take let me know in the comments down below how you feel about the hazmat core but yeah i i actually really do like it they've also had advanced weapon customization come into the game where you basically change how the weapon looks drastically compared to what we had before with like the muzzles or barrels and stuff like that. The guns look very different. Going off of the hazmat core, there will be events that, you know, focus on that core. The first one being June 27th through July 11th, you get a 10 tier battle pass that's free you get free reward out of it and then the containment event will arrive in august which will also run for two weeks and give you another 10 tiers of free rewards completely different tenrai comes back so we'll get more customization options for the Roy armor and we're also getting cyber showdown too and that will have brand new customization items in its battle pass as well and that will begin on august 8th so that all being said I still think that this is probably going to be the best season at the end of it that we've ever had in Halo. I mean, comparatively speaking, you know, just looking at previous seasons, like this has to be the best one so far just on launch. I'm looking forward to seeing the events and whatnot and seeing how the player base reacts to, you know, a lot of the rewards and everything and if more people are going to come back or if more people are just going to play the game more often. I think 343 is on the right track even with their limited workforce. I think everybody there is working extremely hard. I won't lie. I, I do think that they are trying their best. One of the things that they've had to change, though, is the narrative events. We're not going to get cutscenes and stuff like that anymore going forward, which, I'm not going to lie, sucks. I I feel for 343. I feel for, you know, the people that enjoy that stuff. I'm not, like, super crazy into the story, but the cutscenes were starting to look really good, and that's unfortunate. But that being said, let me know in the comments down below how you feel about Season 4. Are you playing? Have you been playing? Are you enjoying it? Are you looking forward to stuff? All that. I do read every comment that's down there. In fact, if you made it to the end of this video, comment down below hazmat just so i can see how many of you actually make it to the end of videos also these clips that i'm showing they're all pretty much all brand new just from a couple of uh little game sessions and stuff i'm not gonna lie lone wolves is my favorite playlist in halo infinite and maybe in halo ever i have so much fun in there i don't know why it's just a ton of fun but that's gonna do it for the video ladies and gentlemen if you enjoyed make sure you leave a like down below if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one peace